Okay, welcome everybody to my talk here at the NDC. My name is Sonu Bialos, and I work as a senior solutions architect for a consulting company called DeepMind. DeepMind is a company specialized in building modern web, uh, web apps for desktop and mobile. And today I'm here to talk to you about how you can get social with Facebook. And it is my opinion that more and more developers should get acquainted with the Facebook developer platform. And before we get started, I'd like to know you guys and girls a little bit better. So I have two simple questions. Just raise your hands if you agree. First question, how many of you consider yourself a web developer? So that's way more than half of you. And the second question, have any of you done any Facebook development app or game? Nobody. A few guys. That's good. Then uh, hopefully you guys will learn some new stuff from my talk here today. And there are, there are three things I want to share with you, to talk about. The first thing is uh, how, why you should get social and why you should care about Facebook and, um, and, uh, and the market opportunities that exists as a game or app developer on Facebook. The second one is a quick view on the Facebook developer platform, the capabilities that is available there and how we can use them and have an important note on security as well. And last but not least, we're going to use most of the time, hopefully, to do uh, demos. And I had some problems in the beginning here. Uh, I just rented this uh, laptop computer 10 minutes ago. So, and it, run, it runs an older version of Visual Studio, but ho hopefully it will work out all right. And, um, and while everybody can join the secret circle, uh, there's not enough room for everybody. But uh, I will try and get you, uh, let you in on a few secrets in regards to the Facebook developer platform. And uh, the first question I'm going to ask answer is why social? There are many reasons why you should do social, and there's also a lot of reasons why you shouldn't do social. It all depends on kind of your business um, your business market and the kind of opportunities you're looking for. But uh, Facebook is actually estimated this year to reach 1 billion users. And that is a lot of users. And that is one of the biggest market opportunities ever for us as developers. I mean, Microsoft recently announced that they have sold 600 million Windows 7 copies. There's 1 billion users on Facebook. And that is still just one in every se uh, seven people, person on this planet. There is still a huge opportunity for market growth in the Facebook user base. And many of you have probably received an invite on Facebook for, uh, for this game. It used to be the fastest growing game ever. And I have actually never played it because I got so annoyed getting so many invitations from this game. But it actually revolu revolutionized how uh, game developers can get uh, a huge market uh, using Facebook. And it's Farmville, of course. I'm pretty sure many of you might maybe have uh, tried it or at least received an invitation for, for this game. And back in 2010, there were six, 60 million active users use, playing Farmville. But since then, it's had already been surpassed by Cityville, made by Singa, the same company, and also The Sims Social. And the Singa, the company that built this application, across all their applications, in 2010, they had 250 million users. And the company is currently valued today uh, at uh, $1.5 billion. And while I could spend all day talking about success stories and, of course, also failures on Facebook, let's just move on to other stuff. And it is um, it's quite obvious that social can be scary for many, and there are truly way too much information available online on all of us already. And it grows every single day. And as you start using the Facebook developer uh, APIs and start looking at the kind of information is available for you as a developer, you need to start thinking twice for whatever you're doing using the Facebook API. Because we have a responsibility as developers which goes way beyond uh, what other people have. So 
just because you can do something with the API and with the information that is available there, you should probably think twice before you do it. Here's an example. There's, um, let me first, yeah, I'll, I'll show this diagram here first. This is my social life. This is all my networks, all my contacts on Facebook. And I'm using a, a, a free tool here called Touchgraph. They have commercial edition as well. And uh, this shows the clusters of my networks. And the red one here, that's all my Microsoft contacts. And the green one, one on the uh, your right here, that's all my uh, former co-workers when I used to work for Capgemini. The top green one, that's all my motorsports friends. And as you can see there, there's information that is generated out of this graph. And you can do the same thing with other things. You just use statistics on top of the Facebook information. And let me give you an example. Many people don't want to share their political views, so they don't put that on Facebook. But uh, as human beings, we like to associate, associate with people that are of our own kind, with the same opinions and stuff. So let's say you're a communist. You probably have a lot of communist friends. They might not be afraid to share that information on Facebook. So what you can do as a developer, of course, if the user had given you access beforehand, you can just go and look at, at his friends and you can see their political views, and you can make a statistic, statistical uh, probability that the user might be communist, as an example. So that's just the first part. Now let's have a look at the uh, developer platform. And there's, there's, you got, you're gonna get into, there's two graph terms when it comes to Facebook. The one is the graph API. That is basically uh, the API that gives you access to everything on Facebook. The, uh, the, Information about the user, all the check-ins, data updates, photos, videos, and everything. And it's a REST API, and you get you use JSON, JSON format to com communicate back and forth to so both read and update. For instance, write us write a new status update. And then you have something called the Facebook Open Graph, which is a, 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 a much newer thing that came. I think it was two years ago. It gives you the ability to specify actions that the user can do in your application. And actions happens on objects. And uh, I'm pretty sure, just raise your hands if you're on Facebook. I just want to see how many of you are on Facebook. Everybody. Great. So you probably experienced when you have a birthday, your timeline gets flooded with a lot of messages. Messages. Uh, have a great birthday and everything. And if you've seen in the last few months, Facebook no longer lists all these congr congratulations on your timeline. Instead, it puts it into an aggre aggregation box. And the same thing you can do now as an app developer. So while it previously was pretty bad to spam a user's timeline, it might still be useful depending on what type of game or application you're de developing. So now you can make aggregations, and that is also something you configure as well. So you can configure if it should be a, just a title, or a thumbnail, or a combination. So this is basically what it is in this folder here. So it's me who made an action, which is shared, and what is shared is the object link. And these are the type of status updates you can then do on a user's timeline. And one uh, very interesting thing is the Facebook credits, which is now available in, I think it's 50 or 80 countries in, countries in the world. And that is the ability for users on Facebook to use their credit cards and fill up their Facebook accounts with something called Facebook credits. These credits can then be used on games and applications. And you can use that to buy digital, uh, digital stuff, such as uh, eBooks, music, or in-game purchases such as a new table or some new shoes and stuff. But what is interesting here about the Facebook credits is, I mean, I have been re reading articles and listening to people talking about microtransactions for so many years. For newspaper, they have, uh, newspaper is one of the industries which have had a hard time with the digital revolution. 
you have a hard time figuring out how you're going to make money online. Especially these days when ads are very cheap and it's not that big business that, as it used to be. But now we have Facebook with 1 billion users and most of those can actually do market transactions inside their applications. And I'm pretty sure some of you also have Xbox where you have Microsoft credits. And it's much easier to actually use those credits than pull up your credit card and type down the numbers every time you want to buy something. And last night, my, uh, Facebook released the App Center, where you, can deploy, uh, where you can announce all your applications or games. And this is very interesting, because Facebook is now listing any kind of application which integrates with Facebook in one way or another. So from this UI, you can actually send applications to your Android phone or your iPhone. I'm not sure if you have Windows Phone support yet, but it's, it's about desktop applications, applications running inside Facebook, as I mentioned, mobile apps. Uh, another question, raise your hand if you have a LinkedIn account. Okay, that's 90% of you. Uh, have you ever uh, reused the password you have on LinkedIn on other websites? You know, some, some guys that uh, admit they have reused the password. Even I have done that. Uh, I have actually experienced having my Skype account taken over by someone in Asia. And I have experienced having my World of Warcraft account taken over. And I, I consider myself uh, interested in security and trying to be secure. And even I fail at doing that. So a few days ago, days ago LinkedIn uh, uh, leaked more than 6 million passwords. And these days, it doesn't matter if, it, if the password is in clear text or if, if it's just a hash of a password. Because there's so much computational power available in the, in the, in the cloud uh, platforms that anyone can, can just generate a lot of random hashes and do comparison on the hashes instead. So why, why should you store password, the user's password, in your database or your, your systems. You shouldn't do that. Passwords are the most uh, private and secret information that most of us have. Why do you share the same password with multiple websites? You have no idea who's going to read that password and what they're going to do with it. I mean, most of you probably don't even tell your partners your password or your boss. For stuff like social security number, we try to keep that secret. That's just ridiculous. So instead of storing passwords in your own database, you can use Facebook for login. And that's what I'm, I'm going to be showing in the first demo here. And authentication on Facebook have improved a lot in the recent times. So now they have imp implemented something called OAuth 2.0. And there's different ways of authenticating on Facebook uh, still. Uh, but this is the preferred way that I'm going to show. Uh, talk about today, and you basically just get a token uh, from a JavaScript library, and you use that to do queries towards Facebook. And you can use the same token either on the client side, in the browser, or on the server side. You just need to get token sent to your own server. And previously, it was possible for an application or a game to ask for offline access on Facebook. And that basically meant that the author of the application had unlimited access to your account forever. And the new change is now the token is valid for one hour and up to 24 hours. And there's a scheme here you can use to renew the tokens. And uh, that is beyond this talk today. And all you need to do is basically just go to developers.facebook.com. That's the portal where you get all the documentation, examples in like in every possible language, at least the most modern languages. There are three types of, three main types of applications you can build on Facebook. The first one is website. You, have, you host your own website, you integrate with Facebook, you can use it for log on, and most people actually uh, already do this. Because they, you, you, many of you might maybe have put a, a like box on your website or your systems. And then you're already using this system here. 
And the second one is building mobile applications where we can uh, do things like get the, uh, all the friends list and stuff and use Facebook, for instance, maybe to, to if you're building a multiplayer game, you could use Facebook to initiate a con connection between two friends. And the third, al third alternative is the building an application which runs inside of Facebook. Which I think yeah, is uh, um, something that hasn't been uh, utilized enough by businesses today. Because businesses have really started to trust Facebook a lot more than they actually say they do. Because you might even have discovered that a lot of big international corporations, instead of advertising for like Nike.com, you see it's Facebook.com slash Nike. And there's other brands that are doing this today. Because Facebook is such a great platform for engaging with your customers and users. So what you can do then, building inside Facebook, would be, for instance, building a, you could build a, a, a shop. You would, could sell, for instance, uh, groceries or whatever. And you wouldn't need to do the whole uh, development of a whole website, doing design and everything. So today we're going to do the, the, the first one here. And it all starts with an application. You go on the developers.facebook.com, you create a new application, and then you decide what kind of type of integration you're going to have. So you can have one application which does everything, or you can just pick from the list here. And there's, there's different settings you have to set depending on what type of authentication you're going to use. This brings us to the uh, third section. Uh, we're going to start building a new application from scratch using MSC4, if it works there, hopefully. And uh, then we're going to do some prototyping, just getting things started. And at the end, we're going to uh, shine everything up with uh, some style sheets, uh, CSS3 and HTML5. And the first thing we will do is just run install package Facebook. That gets you up. Um, previously, there's been many Facebook libraries for C Sharp. And they're all, they're, they're already, I mean, there, there exists a huge bunch of them already on NuGet. But the only thing you really need is this package. It has been rewritten countless times. And it is it's basically just a REST wrapper. So it's very simple. Just run install package Facebook. The other type of SDK we need is the JavaScript SDK, which is the official SDK from Microsoft, uh, from Facebook. Uh, and this is the code you need to just load the JavaScript. Let's try and do some demo. Well, one of the new projects you have in Visual Studio 2012 is the basic one. And I like to get started with this one. You get the, uh, the layout page and everything, but it, there's no controllers. So the first thing we'll do is just add a new controller. We'll add a home controller and we'll add a view for this index. Done. Uh, how many of you have uh, used NuGet? Great, a bunch of you. So you should be pretty familiar with this. Open the package manager and this one. Install package Facebook. And then we two lines of code where calling Facebook. Create a new Facebook client. And as you'll see here, see. Uh, 
there's two overloads in the constructor Facebook client. There's an empty one, and there's one that takes the access to it. So the first demo, we're just going to do the empty constructor. Increase the font size. So we'll do a, a get on the Facebook API and we'll send in my, my user account. We'll do it like this. We'll run this in Firefox. Then we should, can have a look at this in the immediate window. We should see that uh, um, I'm getting returned a, a JSON object, an array with the eight elements. It's basically just giving me all the public information that is available on me for everybody. So that's just the, the most basic way of just doing a query against Facebook on the server side. Then what we what we want to do now is we want to get the access token from the user, uh, which logs on using the Facebook SDK. And then we can do then we can do queries against Facebook behalf of the user. So I have another product set up here, which requires uh, some code to do this. The first part, part here is the, is the one I showed in the slide earlier. This loads the, the JavaScript file from, from Facebook. And uh, as you see, it doesn't specify HTTPS or HTTP. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with this, but uh, most browsers have for many years now supported just referencing uh, CSS files, and JavaScript files, and images like this, and it automatically appends either HTTP or HTTPS, depending on the current pro protocol. And uh, we do the fb.init uh, operation, where the first parameter here is our uh, application ID. And this is the, uh, this ID you get from Facebook when you, uh, when you create your application on the develop developer platform. The second parameter here is status. And here we're telling the Facebook API to actually go and check my logon status whenever the page load is, loads. So you could either uh, do it manually by user action to check if the user uh, is logged on or not, or you can set this to, to true here. And if you sit, set this to true, there are obviously going to be some, some re rendering step. Um, your page is going to maybe jump a little bit because it's done using queries to Facebook and they figure out if it figures out you're already logged on, there might some be some other Facebook events that, uh, that, that happens. Cookie false means that I'm disabling uh, a second way, alternative way of doing authentication with Facebook. If I set this to true, Facebook will actually, the Facebook API will create a, 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 a cookie for us which will send them to our own local server which we can decrypt and use with the application secret that we get from the developer platform. But uh, I wouldn't bother doing that unless you have a very good reason to do it. And the last one here is uh, the XBFML is the uh, Xbox uh, Facebook markup language. You probably maybe seen you, you can create like buttons, uh, the Facebook logon button using special Facebook tags. Uh, I'm not using that today here, but it's enabled and uh, enabled the OAuth authentication. And we subscribe to an event in the Facebook API for st status changed. And all of this code will be out on my, my website within a few days 
Uh, and the first example here shows you how to get the user ID in JavaScript on the client side. This can be useful for things like showing the profile image of the user. You should never trust this value. I've seen examples where developers actually they take the user ID from the browser and send that to send that to the server. But that can easily be mani manipulated on the wire with um, any type of tool in, 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 in the browsers. You can manipulate the user ID. And then suddenly, even I'm logged in as me on the website, I'm going to just change the ID and I will see all the data that exists on other users. So be careful with that. All you want to do is send the access token. And then on server side, you will verify what user is actually logged on. So we're, get, we're getting the access token, putting it on a global variable called Facebook access token. And at the same time, we're doing a query against Facebook. And as you can see, it's pretty similar the way you're doing it in C Sharp and in JavaScript. In JavaScript, it's instead just using fp.api instead of having a Facebook client and doing the, calling the get method. And I'm not going to get into the URL schemes on, on, uh, on the Facebook uh, platform, but it's, it's very simple. REST API, uh, you can do stuff like an ex example here, calling me, then you get the information on, on the logged on user, and you can do uh, me slash friends, or you can do the user ID slash videos to get uh, videos and photos and so forth. The last part is just basically showing and hiding some views depending if the user is logged on or not. If it's logged off, they'll hide the, the other parts. And at the bottom here is just hooking up some uh, click events on the logout and the login. There's one interesting thing here though, that's the scope. And that's how developers, app developers, game developers gets, gets access to the different kind of information on Facebook. You can ask for, I think it's probably more than 50 different types of access you can ask for. And if you ask for that, when, you get when the user gets redirected to Facebook to accept permissions, you will see a huge list of stuff. Uh, so you should be, uh, most users will, will probably not accept if you ask for too much information. But uh, it's very granular and you can specify either access to the user's information or the user's friends information. So for instance here, I'm asking for user likes, but I can also get the check-in of all his friends. So that's basically the JavaScript you need to do, uh, to connect with Facebook. And this is our, our simple view here. We have uh, three different views. This is gonna be, that's uh, the operations that user can do on our website. This is the home file. So this is basically the markup that changes depending if the user is logged on or logged off. So I say, welcome to our site, please log in to Facebook. And if, it's if the user is logged on, we'll show the display name, this profile image. And um, I'm also using something called Knockout JS here. This is on a model view view model uh, framework in JavaScript to properly separate uh, concerns between the views, your, uh, your uh, view model and model. I'm not going to go into that, but it's basically just running some data ban, doing a for each here to list out uh, a menu. And uh, let's create a new controller then. A new action on our same controller. Call this token. And in here, we will get uh, the token from the user in a query string.
if the string is not null or empty. We will do a call to Facebook. We will supply the token into the instructor here. And then uh, we already have a view for this. And the view is basically there's a button, changes the location uh, of the website I'm, I'm currently on, and it sends a token in my query string. So let's run this. Probably working. Maybe a few more seconds. Maybe a few more seconds. So there's uh, there's one point I'm, I want to give here. Uh, I didn't the first demo I did. I created a new project, and the second demo here, here I had already configured the type of HTTP port the website runs on. And you might uh, remember that in the uh, authentication slide I had, it specified that HTTPS is now required. So to use authentication with Facebook, you need to have uh, your site running on HTTPS. But for localhost, you obviously uh, can get away with it without HTTP. But in the uh, API website, you specify your website URL. So if I had this site running on a different port here, this site wouldn't work. So that basically means I mean, the, the Facebook app ID that you put in your, in your JavaScript file is not a secret. So you don't need to hide that information because it's only your URL that is allowed to do queries against Facebook with uh, that API. So uh, let's just log on. I have already logged into this application, application before, so I don't get the dialogue where I should accept what kind of permissions applications are, are allowed to query on me. So as you can see here, I am now logged in to the page to do a query for fb.api on me, where we get my name and my uh, profile image. So our token demo here, I'm going to click the button, and it should redirect me to the, uh, the same URL with the token in the query string. Here. So, I'm creating a new instance of the Facebook client with a token, which we're now supplied by the user. And we should see that the, uh, the media objects now have suddenly 16 items in the array. And we have a lot more information on me. Uh, sort of like my, my uh, favorite athletes, uh, inspirational people, and, and a lot more languages, Klingon, for instance. Not very fluent in Klingon, but I thought it was fun to space on it. So, it's obviously not a good way of sending the token uh, using a query string like this. It's just for demonstration purposes. The, best, the better way of doing it is actually just appending the token as a HTTP header on the requests. And that is something you can do with uh, jQuery. So here in my view model, I have a function called load videos. It is a, there's a, a, a AJAX call 
to my own web API service called the videos. And in the before send operation, I set a request header called access token and I put my Facebook, Facebook access token there. So this is a much better way of actually get, sending the token from the, from the, from the browser and to the server. And the cool thing you can do then is actually start working together with the uh, ASP.NET functionality for security. So I basically just wrote my own Facebook principle implementing the I principle and a Facebook identity implementing the I identity. And then I extended this object to have support for stuff like ID and link and also a shortcut to create a new instance of the Facebook client. And what you then can do in the global AJAX file in the authenticate request, you can get the token, create a new instance of the Facebook principal and put that on the token and I contact that user. So then wherever within your, inside your application, you can just do, do contacts.user or inside the, uh, the controllers, there's a shortcut even for just the user. And then you get the active user that is actually logged on all the time. I mean, th this is very simple, it's just a few lines of code. And instead, inside my API here, I can rely on the built-in mechanisms for security. So let's put an authorize attribute on my web API function. And this is now protected using Facebook authentication. So or we have a video controller here, which is a some, uh, this is the new, uh, basically using the new web API in MVC4. And we're basically just doing a query towards Facebook and getting all the videos that Bill Gates have published on Facebook. It's not that many. So we want to make a, a video viewer of, face of Bill Gates' videos. So in my, uh, in, my, um, in my view here, I have a div uh, which act, acts as my, my view and it's basically just uh, I'm binding up against the array named videos in my view model. And I'm just getting the, uh, the picture of it and, um, and whenever the user clicks on the thumbnail for the video, I call a function called select video. And the select video function is inside my app here. We get the, the current the current video that is selected. I'll just go and do the video dot source. Then you actually get the, the URL to the MP4 file. And we just append a simple video tag to the web page. Try and demo this. And this, of course, does not work in Firefox because Firefox currently doesn't support uh, H264 video codec. Microsoft has created an um, interoperability add in for Firefox, but I never got it working properly. So we use Chrome for this demo. This is my menu here, clicking videos. When I click load videos here, I did a neat little trick with, uh, with Ajax. I have this onload function here in my app.js. It basically binds up to any Ajax call wherever in my code. So whenever an Ajax starts, event is raised globally wherever in my application, I will fade in every element on my page which implements the class loading. And I'll fade it out afterwards. And it's a good tip using classes here instead of IDs because 
often when you're building an application, you might have different type of AJAX indicators on different parts of your application. And that's just a div showing an animated, animated GIF here. And that should then get the four videos that uh, Bill Gates have uh, published on his public profile. So this is uh, videos uh, from his uh, foundation. Whenever the user clicks the button here, it starts loading the video. So this is a video that is, I, I queried the Facebook API, got all the videos that was registered on uh, Bill Gates, and I'm playing them back uh, using the video tag in uh, HTML5. So, now we've seen how you can do simple Facebook queries using .NET, how you authenticate towards Facebook using the JavaScript SDK, and how you send a token from the client to the server and do queries against Facebook with that. Uh, the last demo I'm going to show is uh, something uh, I came up with. Uh, I thought it would be fun to actually figure out where all my friends have checked in on Facebook. And this is an example on information that is hard to discover through the regular Facebook UI. I mean, there's so much information, and if I wanted to see a check-in that a friend of mine did, I had to go to his profile and then look through his timeline, and it was, if it was five weeks ago he, he did a check-in on Facebook, it would, mean, it, would, it would be impossible to find. And uh, recently I've been doing some projects using the Bing Maps. So I thought it would be fun to get all the check-ins for all my friends and showing them on a map. So I have a, a map.js file here. This is, uh, this is basically some, just some, uh, some code which creates push pins and stuff on the Bing map. I'm not going to go through this code and explain it. I'll put it out on my, on my blog after the talk. And this is basically, whenever you click a pin, I'll load the, the Facebook profile for that user. And uh, to create a new Bing map, you just load one of the JavaScripts from uh, virtualearth.net like this, and you need to add a developer account. So you have a, you have to specify. It's pretty similar to how you work with, with Facebook, but instead of having an app ID, you have something called credentials here. And I'm not going to bother showing more code of that. I'll just run it. So this is the Bing map, and I have a button here which will then start loading all my friends. And when I first started doing this, I just had a loop that just went through, through all my friends, sending a request as fast as possible. And I started getting timeouts. And it was basically uh, the, the limit you have on, there's different limits on different APIs, but the limit I was using here, have a maximum 600 requests for the last 600 seconds. So I could chunk it up. I could, if I had like 250 friends, I could just do a lot of queries. But I made one here that sends a query every half a second. So as I'm loading my friends here, there's push pins popping up all around the world here. And as I did it, I started looking at uh, what kind of uh, information I could get here. So when you hoover the push pin. I get the name of my friend, I get whatever text he, taught, uh, he, he wrote while he was there, what, what place it is, uh, so you get GPS locations, and if Facebook knows where it is, you get typed address, street address, a name, and everything. And I also get what type of application they use to check in. As you can see here, I used Facebook for Android. So it takes a while, uh, they have limited the uh, 
made a, a throttling on the operation. So we'll just leave this running and I'll show afterwards when it's filled up here. So this brings us to the last part. Um, now we have built an application, we did some prototyping, just creating three different, uh, two different functions in our application, and we want to style it up. So I'll create it. I will first explain something new that came in the release candidate for MVC4, and uh, it has uh, much better support for bundling all your JavaScript and CSS files. That is one of the, the, the biggest uh, problems with performance today in, in web applications is that we're now dependent on so many JavaScript libraries. And often we just download the minimized version and we include like 20 or 50 JavaScript sometimes. So Microsoft have made a framework which will actually uh, combine all your JavaScripts into a single file and serve that out. And it is intelligent, so while you're debugging, it will load the scripts manually, so you can debug whenever there's a problem. While runtime in production, it will compress and minimize everything. So I will just include another style sheet file here called AppCS, and I have some graphics in my content file here. So what used to look like this, it didn't do anything other than just including another style sheet file. We'll run this in uh, run this in Firefox as well because it's it's actually a much better browser than everything else. It can support stuff like gradient, transparent stuff in multiple layers. Um, so this is my application now. Just included a new CSS file, and uh, I'm not gonna say I'm a, a, a great designer, but uh, it looks a little bit better than what it used to be. To have transparent uh, dialogues and menu here is floating. I'm also using uh, Google Web, uh, Google Fonts. I'm loading in uh, third-party fonts here. And videos doesn't work any better. My application is built as a single page application. So I could be watching the video now while I also uh, was working here on a, on a different section of the application. Yeah, that's it. Let's just have a quick look at uh, our map is starting to look like. And I've still just lo loaded like 200 of my friends. And uh, this is an area where we have to uh, do some considerations when you're working with Facebook. It is much better for you to actually go directly to Facebook using the Facebook API instead of proxying every request. But sometimes there's information you want to combine with your own database perhaps, then you do stuff uh, on the server side. So in this example, it's everything just running in the client and going directly to Facebook. Let's have a look if you can find anyone who's actually checked in here at the conference. And let the Holman check in. Uh, the time here is, uh, there's a bug on the time here. And let that check in. And uh, as you can see, our friends all over Oslo here have checked in. Petri Wilhelmsen checked in as well. That's the demos. As I said, uh, biggest uh, important consideration you, ha you have to do is uh, whatever you should do the request directly to Facebook or proxy the request. And uh, after I say uh, thank you, I will take some questions. Thank you.